I am Karin. And I'm Andrew. And we are the new botanist. Today we're talking about the Calatea and uh, the Maranta. They are um, both of similar species? No, they're, they're different genus, technically. So they come under the common umbrella of the prayer plant, and these plants are gorgeous foliage. They are in a huge range. So these are just two gen- uh, genera that you've mentioned, but there's others. And there's over 120 species when combined. And it includes the fishbone plant, the pinstrip, the peacock prayer plant. The foliage and the diversity is just astonishing. Very vibrant plants. Are they quite difficult to look after? Because I've had a pinstripe, which dried out. I've had a um, Maranta tricolore, which has these beautiful dark green and then bright green and red uh, lines and that one died and I've currently got a calatea which um, you know has the, has this beautiful um, purple on the underneath of the leaves and that one seems to be quite tricky although I have also got one in my office and the one in my office is doing really well so are they quite tricky plants? In my experience no but they do require specific conditions all of them are uh, originally from the tropical rainforests of South America i.e the Amazon so they do prefer humid conditions so if you've got a bathroom or a kitchen they'll really flourish there and misting they really benefit from a mist uh, there's a lot of sort of research out there in literature that said misting only lasts 10 minutes. It's not much of a benefit, but it really does. It, it increases the uh, humidity. It doesn't increase it all day. Um, maybe a little bowl of water would help or clumping your plants. But the fact that it washes the leaves and these plants adapted to have lots of water running on the leaves, it really does help their growth. When you say um, clumping plants together, what does that do? So it just increases the local humidity conditions, not by a measurable amount for us, but for the plants it does benefit them. So if you do have a few of these prayer plants, pop them next to each other if you can, or pop them next to other plants that do need humidity um, in your bathroom. It creates a microclimate that benefits these plants. I went to the Botanic Gardens and they have got quite a lot of um, Marantas and Calateas there and they're absolutely stunning and some of them are absolutely huge. How big do they grow? In the wild, they could easily get to about, let's say, a circumference of two to three metres. They they grow outwards, so they grow from rhizomes, which are specialist roots under the ground, and they grow along and then they pop up new growth, so they expand outwards. So they usually they'll grow about, oh, it's hard to say because there's so much variation, up to about a metre, but they spread a lot. Um, and the interesting thing, because there's so many genera and so many species all clumped together, these plants are collectively known as prayer plants because they actually have a very special effect on their leaves. So they actually open and close their leaves. So I've noticed when I'm sitting in my living room, I've got a really big fishbone one uh, next to me, you can actually hear the leaves not click but you can actually hear them rustle and you say oh what's this and it's actually the leaves starting to close up for the night so the when the first spanish explorers came uh to investigate the amazon they actually saw these plants and very interesting we have to take them because they're beautiful uh but they actually noticed at night they sort of close their leaves almost like someone who's starting to pray and then in the morning they would open their hands up their leaves up so that's where the name prayer comes from, prayer plants. Amazing. And so uh, their colours, obviously, we can't get around the fact that they are incredibly striking. They're so bright uh, and on the side of the leaves, so dark sometimes. Uh, and, and with the pinstripe as well, like this, this, this very delicate pattern. What, what is causing them to be so, um, so colourful? And does it have some kind of evolutionary reason for why they look like they do? So generally the darker ones, the pinstripe one, which is very, very striking, it's sort of dark purple, black with white stripes. It's very alien-like. The darker the leaves, the darker in colours, the black ones tend to grow further to the ground. Uh, So there's lots of tree coverage in the Amazon uh, rainforest, lots of competition for light. 
So these plants have evolved to take in special wavelengths, so it's far red light. So they need to change their colour of leaves to attract that uh, light. Now we're starting to get quite involved in science, so I'll try and keep it really straightforward. But the majority of plants need a specific wavelength, the red and uh, blue. And to attract that, they are green, so they absorb it. So they, they don't want green light, so they bounce it off, and that's what we see as green. So these darker colour uh, prayer plants grow deep within the rainforest that's dark, and they want to use uh, special wavelengths so they can actually get it. So that's why they're different colours. And so when I, when I was having this uh, tour of the botanic gardens, there was um, a, a woman who was uh, sort of talking about the plants and the specific calatea with the, I think it was a velvet calatea with a, like this really beautiful green leaf. And then the purple actually serves a purpose at the bottom of the leaf as well to capture light that bounces from the ground back up so that it could maximise its light absorption. It's fascinating because these plants live in conditions that it's almost like a massive mega city. So they have to have competition for space. They have to have ways of utilising as much light as possible. So in your homes, don't put them in direct sunlight. They, they won't like it. So it's, it tends to be indirect sunlight or slightly darker rooms uh, that they grow ideally in. I was just going to ask you that, like, does does that mean that we we really need to, with these plants specifically, be very careful where we put them? Because if they get too much light, will they lose the definition of their and their colour? Generally, if you put them in direct sunlight, they won't grow as much. Uh, they will appear faded, as you just said. So you want to put them, so if I assume you have a south-facing window, you want to put your plant against the wall, uh, let's say two, three metres away from the south face window, north facing it can be on the windowsill. Uh, but the biggest problem I find with uh, prayer plants is the humidity. They really want humidity. Put them in bathrooms, misting, regular misting, keeping the soil damp, uh, not soggy, but damp. Uh, that's the main problems that I find. So um, in terms of uh, things that can go wrong with them, so so as I as I said, I've, I've killed a few and I think they've always just gone very crispy and I think by the sounds of it, I've let them go too dry. The, the leaves usually show a lot of signs of stress quite soon on. Uh, so if the leaves go crispy, it's either too much light, so I would consider moving away from direct sunlight or if you know it's not sunlight and it's watering, it's either too much or too little. And usually humidity is quite a big problem. So their leaves will go a bit yellow and droop a bit and have brown uh, edges. That's a humidity thing. So if you see that, you might be worried, oh, but the soil's damp, mist, mist, mist. Uh, even put it in the bathroom whilst you're showering so it gets that humidity. So these plants are very sensitive to that. But the, the benefit of these plants as well, because the... Uh, grow outwards through these rhizomes is that if you need to pot up which you'll have to do depending if it grows really fast every year let's say is that you can actually pull them apart um, and then you can actually reproduce that way so you sort of grab a clump and then rip the roots off it sounds absolutely awful and torturing to your plants but it's used to it it's fine or if you feel a bit concerned get some scissors or secateurs and cut away and you actually get new plants from that. I can imagine I'd be reluctant to pull roots apart, especially if it means that I kill both sides. Is it relatively foolproof? It looks absolutely harsh. And I've done it in my garden and I've done it with my prayer plants. <laughs> it looks like a murdering thing. But the, the key thing is, is that you have to lay your plant down, pull out its pot, if it's got lots of roots, grab a clump. As long as it's got roots, stems and leaves intact, pull it apart, cut it. It should be fine. The first few weeks, it will look sorry for itself, but it'll take and it'll be fine. They are, again, relatively easy to um, to propagate then. And is that the only method of doing it or are there different ways? No, unfortunately, these plants do do well with cuttings, root division which is pulling off the sort of plants. That's the best way to do it. One of my calateas I bought in a supermarket and it was already not looking very happy. 
um, is it one of those plants that once it is going a bit, it is quite hard to nurture it back to health? If they start looking stressed, they can be recovered. But usually it's the humidity, 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 humidity. That's the biggest problem with uh, prayer plants. And we are forgetting another uh, genus involved in prayer plants, which is the never, never plant. And I've got a huge one just over here. It sort of looks like a zebra pattern and it's called the C and it's called the Cianthia. It's called the Cianthia. Cianthia. Uh, it's like any other prayer plant, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the leaves do droop very dramatically. So in the night, it looks dead. In the morning, it wakes up. So it's like a happy feeling when you come downstairs and it's all plump. That's amazing. Um, I can sort of see it in a corner, but it's a bit too dark to see the leaves. What shape are the leaves? So it's elongated leaves. It's uh, almost looks like a flat fish. Uh, so it's that sort of style. And it's got a green, sort of dark green, light green passing. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And they're very tolerant. So it's near a radiator and it's near a walkway. And I do bash the leaves sometimes and it won't die. So my worries about how difficult this plant is are um, maybe a little bit misplaced. Is if, if, you, if you make sure that it gets high uh, humidity and just giving it a mist a couple of times a day. Maybe just once a day. Uh, and if you, forget, if you forget once or twice, it's fine. If you're going away at the weekend, it'll be fine. Just give it a mist, a really good mist. Make sure the leaves are wet because it's adapted to these conditions. In fact, the reason why they close at night is to let the water drain off them. They don't want water pooling, which rots the leaves. Is there anything else that you would like to say about this plant? These plants are foliage plants. They have beautiful, bold foliage, all sorts of colours, but they don't really flower. Certainly not in our homes. They don't produce any flowers. In the wild, they produce little white boring flowers compared to their foliage so don't expect flowers but actually they do the tricolore did, did have flowers last year just before it died how did you do that <laughs> um yes i think i think mine also it was it seemed to be just one it seemed to be one stem and instead of growing up it grew sideways so i had to actually lie it on a shelf for it to be but it still was flowering it was it was kind of odd maybe you knew it was dying so it was one last kabang thanks so much for listening we hope you will join us again next time for more tips and tricks on how not to kill your plants if you'd like us to cover a specific plant or have any other questions you can get in touch via botanicaldoctor.co.uk